Here we'll talk about discourse and social change as it has been theorized or discussed by Fairclough. Fairclough believes uh, and divides uh, the macro domain of uh, discourse in, into a kind of political discourse, political talk or government policies. And then he refers to uh, the discourse, at, uh, for example, at a workplace uh, as a micro domain. He used a term Technology, uh, technologization of uh, uh, discourse as top-down interve intervention to change discurs discursive orders uh, within a certain discursive practice, and uh, where he he is he he proposes seems to propose that this might work from macro to micro, from political talk to uh, to a certain uh, kind of micro uh, discourse like. Uh, a discourse at uh, workplace. Then Fairclough has also argued that the link between social practice and other uh, practice, let's say discursive practice, uh, practice involves uh, a kind of integration of macro and micro uh, practices or analysis of discursive events. And then where the former includes the analysis of technologization of uh, uh, various uh, approaches or technologization process where we see a certain event uh, from a macro and micro level both and we see its political, social and immediate contextual aspects at different stages of our analysis. On one side, no ins instance of discursive practice can be interpreted without reference to its context. We have to see a certain discursive practice within a context, otherwise we won't be able to reach, uh, reach its, the various uh, agendas, various meanings behind its production, or uh, its reproduction, and then its consumption in a certain kind of audience, in a particular uh, segment of the society. S similarly, on, on, the, on the other hand, rather, on the other hand, we can see that macro phenomena such as technologization of Discourse cannot be properly analyzed without uh, uh, reference to uh, the, the act, its actual effects on, on the audience or on, on the sociocultural practice. And before that, on, on discursive practice, how a certain uh, phenomena, macro phenomena has affected the actual practice which is being investigated, we cannot say that a certain uh, discourse actually created an impact or may possibly create an impact. We have some evidence that it might have uh, it, it might have played with or might have effect, uh, certain effects on some kind of uh, sociocultural practice in, in the reality or in which the discourse we are, in, we are investigating is being produced. Uh, specifically, he considers the role of discourse in a range of major uh, contemporary cultural changes. He thinks that discourse has, uh, has been instrumental uh, in, in documenting various socio-cultural changes recently, which happened throughout the world. And he believes that discourse is, is one of the elements of change. People do uh, propose certain changes through discourses. They do uh, implement those changes through discourse. They do legitimize certain changes through discourses. This is what happens in advertisement on the contemporary media. Uh, how a certain product, which may have certain side effects, is, is legitimized, is, is produced as, as the best choice for the audience. And most of us uh, use those products even without questioning them. So this is the power of legitimization which is produced through, through, uh, through the production of certain kind of discourse. So in, in this way we can say as Fairclough argues that uh, discourse is an element for social change. He has analyzed certain shifts towards post-traditional forms of social life and more reflexive forms of social life uh, and a promotional culture in which everything is promoted uh, in an advertisement fashion where brand culture has emerged and new and these brand cultures or these promotional cultures have 
actually uh, generated new values uh, of, of for for the uh, for the people living in the contemporary world. If we just look at the youth around us. Uh, we can find some kind of similarity among the youth living across the world. And where does it come from? Largely because of certain changes in 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 the culture across the world, and we can see uh, a semblance or kind of initiation of the emergence of new youth culture, which which is uh, in in certain ways is global in nature. Uh, their their likes of dresses, their likes for music are are becoming common somehow. And then uh, Fairclough extracted examples from advertisements for from uh, academic uh, admit advertisements for academic posts, materials uh, for a conference, a curriculum vitae, and undergraduate prospectus for admissions uh, in a university for the purpose of re for for the purpose of his research, and he found out various segments of reality. Uh, which are promotional in nature and are appealing to a certain class or certain way of thinking. Uh, for him, CDA focuses on conversation between institutional management and academic staff. Uh, he actually investigated the conversation between management staff or academic staff and the prospective students also and found out certain pa patterns which may be interesting for future researchers. Fairclough uh, has suggested uh, during these studies that humor is a design feature of the mixed yana, is 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 deliberately generated in order to attract a certain audience, and uh, by generating such uh, such element in your talk or conversation, uh, a serious critical ta talk can be lightened up, or a serious business talk can be lightened up, can be. Uh, Sometimes the element of uh, uh, a kind of a bad message can be reduced by creating some element of humor. So humor can be a serious discourse strategy to convey a certain message or convey a certain uh, element through through our talk. So uh, they we can conclude that uh, as Fairclough claims that discourse can be used as a social change. And as discourse uh, analysts or students of discourse analysis, we need to see discourse from this perspective also.